Hey everyone, welcome to another How to Play Warmer 40K 7th Edition. As always, my name is Jay, and in this episode I'm going over the fight subphase of the assault phase, essentially the last part of every turn of Warmer 40K 7th Edition. And this is by far the most complicated part of the entire turn. In this part alone, you'll need to know almost the entire stat line of any miniature that you're using in the assault phase. And we'll be going over all this in this week's video. So, now that you've assaulted it, you know that the assault will occur. You've rolled your dice, it, they've gotten in, everything is good to go for the assault. Now it's time to actually start the assault. So, the first thing you need to know during the assault phase is the initiative. You see, the initiative dictates when a model will get to attack. It starts with initiative 10 and goes all the way down to initiative 1. So essentially, the higher the value, the quicker they get to attack before anyone else. So with every assault phase, you start at initiative 10 and go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And after one, uh, it's over, essentially. Now, what controls a model's initiative? Pretty much the initiative characteristic of that model. Uh, there are a couple things that can alter it. For example, uh, some models, like this orc war boss or knob, has a power claw. Now, a power claw is such a strong weapon in close combat, and it has a special rule called unwieldy. And unwieldy means that it goes at initiative one if you choose to use that weapon. You can, however, go at the normal initiative for that model and forfeit using that weapon if you decide to. If you really want to go first over your opponent and you don't want to use the weapon, you can choose to go at initiative as opposed to using the unwieldy weapon. Another factor that controls your initiative is whether or not you assault it through terrain. Now, many models in Warhammer 40k some edition don't have what's called um, grenades, specifically offensive grenades. So, for example, this orc boy has a stick bomb. Stick bombs are the equivalent of grenades. Space Marines, like this Space Marine, also have grenades. So if either of them assault through terrain, their initiative will not be affected. However, other models that don't have a, an equivalent to these grenades will be dropped down to one if any member of the group had to assault through terrain in that phase. So it's a very imperative to know exactly where you're assaulting and in which directions before declaring it. Because if you don't have grenades and you assault through it, you will be reduced to initiative one. That could hurt. Now, at initiative, what you do is an initiative pile in. And any model whose initiative step is that one that you're currently on gets to pile in towards the opponent three inches if they're not already base to base with an opponent's models. And then you decide which models get to do their attacks. Now, any model gets to attack if they are either in base to base with an opponent's model or within two inches of a model that's base to base with an opponent's model. These models would get their attacks in. Now, if you pile in and you're not that close in the end, you don't get your attacks in. That's unfortunate. Now it's time to find out the number of attacks you have. The number of attacks is under the A characteristic for attacks in close combat. For example, this Space Marine has one base attack. So if he gets assaulted, he gets one attack at his initiative step. However, once again, there are many factors which could, uh, which could alter how many attacks you get in the assault phase. The most frequent one is, did the squad assault in this assault phase? Typically, if a squad assaults in this assault phase, so it's my turn and I assault you, my models will actually get an extra attack for everyone that gets their attacks in, which is pretty sweet. So the Space Marine, if he assaults the Orc Boys, he would get two attacks on the charge. However, if he gets assaulted, he only gets one attack in this phase. Another factor which could add to the number of attacks that you get is whether or not your model possesses two what are called close combat weapons. For example, this orc boy has a slugger and a choppa, which is equivalent to a pistol for the slugger, and a choppa, which is just a close combat weapon. If you have two close combat weapons, you actually get an additional attack. So the orc boy in this case is actually base attacks two, will actually get another attack, making it three, regardless of whether or not he assaulted this turn because he has two close combat weapons. This other orc boy has a shooter. You know, a shooter is not a close combat weapon, it's just an okay gun. So in this particular instance, he only gets two attacks base. 
Now, as always, you get one dice for every attack that you have. Now what you typically do is bunch your attacks based on the same initiative step, uh, weapon skill, and and strength, and, and all the same characteristics. So if you have a group of guys going at the same time that have all the same weapons, you can roll their attacks together. Otherwise, I'd recommend using uh, different colored dice or rolling them at different times. However, you do have to resolve all the hits before the two wounds and, and so forth at each initiative step. So now that you've decided how so now that you've figured out how many dice you get, you have to figure out what you need to hit your opponent. Now, this is actually the weapon skill that you need to compare. Now you're gonna learn that weapon skill is a little arbitrary, but basically it sums up like this. And remember, you're comparing the model that making that's making the attacks to the average of the squad or the, the majority of the squad. So if there are a variety of weapon skills in the opponent's squad, you choose the one that is the, that is the most common. So, weapon skill basically sums up like this. If your model is of a higher weapon skill than the majority of the squad that it's attacking, right? if you take, you take the majority weapon skill to compare, he hits on threes. If it's equal to your opponent's weapon skill, you hit on fours. If it's lower than your opponent's weapon skill, but your, weapon, your opponent's weapon skill is not more than twice yours, you hit on fours. And if your opponent's weapon skill is more than twice yours, you hit on fives. So for example, this space marine is weapon skill four, meaning if he's attacking an, a model with a weapon skill of three or lower, he hits on threes. On, if your opponent's weapon skill is four, the space marine would hit on fours, if your opponent's weapon skill is 5, 6, 7, or 8, he would hit on 4s. But if it's 9 or 10, he'd hit on 5s. So as I said, it's pretty kind of arbitrary. It's not as, as closely correlated to the uh, to the ballistic skill as you see in the shooting phase. So that's important to consider. So now you know what to hit. So you pick up your dice. Now you know what to roll to hit. Now it's time to determine what you need to roll to wound. To know how to roll to wound, you need to compare the strength of the attacker plus any weapon characteristics that could modify it, and compare it to the toughness of the model or the majority of the squad that it's attacking. So, for example, this orc boy is weapon is strength three. Now he has a special rule that if he assaults in the assault phase, he actually gets plus one to his strength for that first combat. So if he assaults in, he's actually strength four. Otherwise, he is strength three. And uh, you just compare it to the toughness, and it's the same as the shooting phase. If they're equal, he wounds on fours. If it's lower, it can be threes or twos. And if the toughness of your opponent is higher, it could be fives or sixes. He can only wound up to three steps higher than his strength. So a strength four space marine can only wound up to toughness seven in close combat. He can't wound past toughness seven. Once again, these wounds are gonna be divided up into wound pools. Now, once again, you have to look at a few characteristics of the weapon. Does it have an AP? If so, you compare the AP value against the armor save of your opponent, just as we did in the other phases, the shooting phase primarily. And if the AP of the weapon is equal to or lower than the armor save of your opponent, he doesn't get an armor save against this particular weapon and can only take an invulnerable save if he has access to them. Remember, there are no cover saves in close combat. You either get an armor save or an invulnerable save, whichever one is better and which ones you have access to, depending on the AP of the weapon attacking you. So, that's it. And then what you do is you do this process for every initiative step. You work your way all the way down from initiative step 10 to initiative step 1. Now after 1 is complete, you now total the number of unsaved wounds that each squad allocated, providing that both squads are still alive. If one squad is dead, the winning squad gets to consolidate typically one dice worth of distance called a d6. So you roll the d6 and they get to consolidate that many inches in any direction that the um, controlling player chooses. However, if both squads are still alive, you compare the number of unsaved wounds that each one has withstood. And whoever caused the most unsaved wounds wins the combat. Now, if the losing opponent has a rule called fearless, nothing happens. If 
the models don't have the fearless special rule, you have to roll a leadership check. And what you do is you take your leadership, the highest leadership in the squad, and subtract that number by the number of unsafe wounds, the differential of the unsafe wounds between you and your opponent. So if your opponent caused two more unsafe wounds than you did, your leadership minus two. And then you roll your leadership check, and if you roll equal to or less than that number, you're okay and you stay in combat. If you roll higher than that number, an initiative roll off happens. And this is where the fun could really potentially happen in the assault phase. So what you do is, you take the highest initiative in your remaining squad members, roll a d6 each, and compare the values. If the winner's initiative plus dice is equal to or higher than the loser's initiative plus dice, they've caught the squad, and the squad is destroyed. Once again, there are except exceptions to this rule. For example, Space Marines have a rule called initial no, initial no, no fear, uh, which will prevent them from being destroyed. However, orcs, for example, don't have that special rule. So if the Space Marines initiative, if, so if the Space Marines win combat, and their initiative plus dice is, is equal to or greater than the orcs initiative plus dice, the orc squad is entirely destroyed. All the models are removed from play, and then the D6 consolidate occurs, just as if they won the entire just as if they wiped out the entire squad during the actual assault phase. And if the combat will continue in future phases, each squad gets to then pile in an additional three inches towards the opponent's squad. That way it allows more models to get in combat the next phase. And that's it. So now you know how the combat phase of the assault phase works. So let's go over with an, an example just to see, uh, just to show you what it would look like. So these five orc boys with Slugga Choppas have assaulted these five space marines. Now once again we first look at initiative. The space marines have initiative four. The orc boys have initiative two. So we start at ten. Ten. Nobody goes because no one has initiative ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Nobody goes. No one has initiative up to those. So at initiative step four the Space Marines do their initiative pile in, each of them moving three inches if they're not already base to base with the Orc Boys. Any Space Marine that is within two inches of another one that's base to base or already in base to base gets their attacks in. A Space Marine's number of attacks is one. Since they didn't assault in, they don't get the bonus attack in this particular example. So they get five attacks. Now since they all have the same strength, toughness, and initiative, we're gonna roll them together. So five dice, five attacks, and as you can see, they need fours to hit, because their weapon skill is four, and the orc boys is also four. Since they're equal, they need fours to hit. So they roll a hit and get some hits. Now to wound, their strength, four, there's no modifiers on any of their weapons, and the orc boys is also toughness four. Since the toughness equal to strength, they need fours to wound, so then they roll their to wound rolls. And now, since there's no AP of their weapons, you simply roll the number of armor saves equal to the number of dice that they wounded. In this particular case, there's only one wound. So we roll the one dice, see if he passes the six up armor save for the orc boy, and he fails, so the orc boy is removed from play and is dead. Now we would take into consideration, we'd set it aside and keep note of that one dead orc boy. So then the orcs pile in at initiative step two. Since they each have a slug of choppa, and they each assaulted in this phase, they would get four attacks. Base two, plus one for the close combat weapons, plus one for the assault. So four attacks each. Their weapon skill is equal to the Space Marine's weapon skill. So fours to hit. Their strength in this case is four due to Furious Charge, their special rule, that when they assault in, they get plus one strength. Now, at any time after this, they would be strength three. Please take that into consideration. But for this particular part, their weapons, their strength is four. The toughness of the Space Marine is four. So they need fours to wound. So fours to hit, fours to wound. And then the Space Marines would get to roll their armor saves equal to the number of wounds because of the fact that there's no AP on any of the weapons that the Orc Boys are currently using. So the Space Marines 
roll their their armor saves, all four of them, and they pass them all. So in the end, no Space Marines were killed. Zero. And one Orc Boy was killed. One. Since the Space Marines inflicted one unsaved wound over the Orc Boys, the Space Marines have won combat. So now, the Orc Boys would have to do a leadership check. Their leadership is seven, which is the base leadership, the highest in their squad. Minus one, the differential between their number of wounds caused and their opponent's number of wounds caused. So in this case, it's actually six. So they roll two dice for their leadership check, and if they rolled six or less, like here, they passed, and they would continue in combat and get to fight on. Now what happens if they fail? So let's see, like here, they roll higher than six. And that means that they failed their leadership check. Now please consider that even if the leadership minus the wounds differential brings you lower than two, a roll of two, so two snake eyes, would always result in a pass leadership check. So let's say these orc boys had 10 members of their squad, they lost six, the space marines lost none, so they'd actually, seven minus six is one, a, a leadership of two is always the minimum for a leadership check. Now, if the orc boys failed, like here, they would have to do an initiative roll off against the space marines. So the space marines roll and add their dice to four, their initiative, and the orcs get to roll the dice and add it to two, their initiative. If the space marines is equal to or greater than the orc boys result, then the orc boys are caught and completely destroyed. If the orc boys initiative plus dice is higher, they would end up falling back. You roll 2d6, so two dice, and they move in that direction completely backwards towards their table edge. Now, Space Marines then once again would get to do a consolidation move and would roll one dice and move in any direction they choose. And that's it. So that's the assault phase in a nutshell. So just to summarize, at your initial step, you pile in three inches. If you're within two inches of a model that's in base to base or you're in base to base yourself, you get to attack. Otherwise, you don't. You determine your number of attacks and using your weapon skill, you figure out what you need to hit your opponent. If your weapon skill is equal to your opponent's, it's fours. If your weapon skill is higher than your opponent's, threes. If your opponent's is higher but not twice, more than twice as high, fours to hit. And if your opponent's is more than twice, to, twice as high, fives to hit. After rolling your number of dice to hit, you pick up those number of dice that hit, and you roll to wound, comparing the strength of the weapon slash model to the toughness value of your opponent's. After that, you roll the dice again, determine and see how many dice actually ended up resulting in a wound. Your opponent then rolls armor saves or invulnerable saves, depending on which ones apply, equal to the number of wounds that you caused. In the end, you add up how many unsaved wounds you caused, compare whoever caused the most, won the combat, and potentially wipe out the opponent's squad if they fail their leadership check and fail their initiative roll off. And that's it. That is the fight phase in a nutshell. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm gonna keep doing this series uh, with more special rules and more situations in future videos. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode of How to Play Warhammer 40K, 7th edition. Stay tuned for more videos. As always, this is a free content video. So a huge thank you to all you Patreon subscribers for supporting my videos and my content. I can't thank you enough. If you wanna help support my videos, Please check out the link in the description below. See you for more episodes of How to Play for 40K. Till next time, this is Jason. Happy painting, everyone.